Now we're out here trying to get some skipjack. Let me show you where we're at here. I'm gonna try to get us some skipjack for in the morning so we can go catch some, uh, some blue. Well, Steve Stacy, tell them what you're doing. I'm trying to see if I can find some skipjack. For what? Catfishing, baby. <laughs> Catfishing, baby. <laughs> Ain't very big, but you figure there's a couple good cuts of bait out of it. Two, two to three, depending on how you cut him. But I'll take it. I'm gonna put him to work tomorrow. And I always put mine straight on ice so that they flash freeze. I want the body temperature to go down as quick as they can because bait fish will decay real quick. The best way to keep them. And then since me and Willie are fishing tomorrow, I'll leave these on ice all night and just make sure they ain't standing in water. I'll probably put them in gallon bags and just leave them on ice so that they stay good and cold all night long so they're fresh in the morning. That's, that's a blue knife. Catfish bait. <laughs> We're not picky. Oh, oh well, yeah, moon eye. See the teeth in that yeah. chair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's get a good look here. Look at it. We'll take, that. we'll take that for bait. What up? <laughs> on our way to the water, we're going to try to tie into some blue cats. Hopefully, we'll we try. might pick up a flathead. Yeah, that's right. We're going to try and get some. Yeah, we're going to try. We got some bait yesterday. We're going to try to get some more bait today. It just gave us something to do yesterday, but we're going to try to get some more bait today and go get it in the water. You see behind us, see that boat pulling and dragging along back there? Anyhow, guys, stay with us. Hopefully, we'll show you some fish. By the way, this is Steve Stacy, owner of Real Cat Napper Rod. Cat Life, baby. Cat Life. Cat Life. Real Cat Napper. Right there. If you ever looking for any rods, get up with Real Cat Nappers. That's the man. Is. We're gonna go catch some fish. We hope to catch some fish and show you how we do it. We're gonna try. Where are we at, Steve? Right now we're on the Ohio River. On the Ohio River. Yep. About what I run out right there. About like that. I don't run super big chunks of bait. I don't use half a skipjack. I run about an inch, inch and a half. That's it. My biggest fish have come on pieces of bait like right there. 370s come on a piece of bait that size. That's all I did. I'm just gonna drop three out there, run three for right now, and see what happens. Feel like net, or think you can uh, lift him in? Oh yeah, 
blue guy. First fish. Don't shout the boat. That's the way you do it, break the ice. Right, right there, there guys. There. This is a nice little blue. Yeah. That'd be a eat, that'd be an eater guy right there. Yeah, break the ice right there. Break the ice. Back to the depth. Alright, so Willie broke the ice. Willie got it started. Can't pull him or you need a net. Nah, I should go pick him up. Unless he grows when he gets up close. Yeah. But he won't feel Nah, he's about like what you is. He's a little bigger. It's all right. Decent little fish. That's a decent guy right there. What do you say, buddy? Decent little guy. Yeah, buddy. Blow off good, buddy. She's got number two. Blow off good. Yeah. Yeah. That's sandwich right there. Yeah. That's sandwich. There we go. Two. It gets out there. Yeah. Hey guys, we got a good mix of bait going on here. This one here's got a piece of what is that moon eye. It's got some moon eye on it. We're gonna put this one out. We're gonna put a we're gonna put one of these on. Run to the right of the boat. What we're doing is we're pulling. What we're gonna do? See about a half a mile. Yeah, point about four, point five, point four, point five mile an hour. Point four, point five up river. We got the wind blowing against us, so it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle. But I think we'll get it done. So anyhow, we're gonna throw a PCAP board on there. As you can see, these are made for real cat nappers by B, uh, BCAT uh, boards. So if you're ever interested in these, and these are great. They pull out nice and work great. So I'm getting ready to put one of these on here. First, I'm gonna cast this out and uh, get this going. Okay, guys, so what we're gonna do, <clears throat> let's see, we're about 42 foot of water. So I wanna throw about something close to that out there how we do these. I know that's probably a little further than 42 foot. So yeah, that's, that's gonna be about 60 feet out there yeah. when which you're done. Which work fine. So what I'm gonna do, is why that's one like, once I throw that out, I'm gonna put the cord on. I'm gonna run this back on, push this clip up. That on there, just like that. Open that up, run that line up in that holder, set this baby on here, drop her down. Let that water catch it, start pulling it out. I'm just let that run out. Pull that out. While that's going out, I'm going to go ahead and run my rear poles out straight off the back. We're going to be dragging. Yeah, we tried to spin drifting for a while, picked off two small fish, so uh, we switched up, decided to go upriver, drag some baits, pull some boards, and see if we had any better luck that way. Plus, we found some shad, so. I think I'm going to stop that right here. So I'm just going to engage that and we'll run right out. Yep. 
see it, if you watch it, it's coming right out inside the boat. It's just gonna run out inside the boat and start running right next to us. Now with this right here, I just got a tank float. That's just a piece of old cart there, small cart. And that's a B-cat uh, dragon weight that I use. So I'm gonna throw this straight off the back. And that's probably, I don't know, maybe two and a half, three foot of yeah, lead or something like that. I'll let a little bit of line run out. Got a little further than this last one. And that board's just out there riding. Then, about letting the baby go. Yeah, so. yeah, we got them spread out. We got board there, two assassins dragging there. One dragon there, one dragon there, board right there, and then I suspended one off the side of the boat. Everything's separated and off the rear. Yeah. We're gonna see what happens, guys. Stay tuned. Alright, take down all planter boards. You need a net or you feel like I asked I asked that because I just I don't you feel like a small one. Does he? He's got a little shoulder. Just let me know. I'll step down and grab that. I'll step down and grab the net if I need to. Yeah, see what he looks like. Out in that deeper water. Oh, yeah, that's a decent fish. You got it? Yeah, that's a decent fish right there. cab boards broke in it's the first time i've used that those boards too so it got broke in pretty quick i've not had them on the water since i got them Yeah, a little scratched up. There. Nice fish. 18 to 20, yeah. I'd say 18 to 20.
And unfortunately, with all the wind and going upriver with this sun, I gotta kinda anchor out a little bit at a time. It puts too much pressure on her if I run her out and then let her go, it puts a lot of pressure on the board. Another eater size. Oh, that's flathead. Yeah. I told you when I hooked in that one we lost a while ago, I thought it felt like it might have been a flathead. A little flathead. Dragon. 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 Dragon, Dragon cut bait. Little flathead. Look at there. Flathead's better than no head. Yes, sir. Little flathead. Look how orange that boy is. Little buddy, fun. Yeah. Hey, fish is a fish, baby. They can't all be big. Pretty little cute little flathead. Yeah. Little flathead. Dragon bait. Cut bait at that. We think it weighs about 30. Yeah, he's probably, he might go 35. He might go 35? Yeah, he might go 35. Yeah, maybe 34 and a half. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I might, I go with that. Oh, flathead dragon. Really back at work. Got him another one on. Really? That's good. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah, I thought it because it was a real slow gradual pool. I couldn't tell if it was hung up and then it bounced a couple times. I thought, no, that's a fish on there. Love my fast <laughs> We got a storm coming in behind us. We're sitting here debating how long do we stay before we get wet. <laughs> but we're going to wet. That's a flathead. Another flathead. Another flathead. Huh? Yeah, he did. Yeah, it's flathead. That's a flathead for you right there. It's a flathead. But he ain't a bad flathead. No, uh-uh. No, hey. Guys, when people tell you that you can't catch a flathead dragon, Tuesday dragon. That ain't very big, but two flats dragon. Flathead. That's two. Alright guys. We'll see you later. Good boy. There you go. <laughs> I'm going I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little shocked. I did not think that was a flathead. I thought that was gonna be a blue. Somebody tell you you can't catch a flathead dragon, <laughs> dragon baits. I think it could be, but I've heard of people catching them going pretty fast too. So who knows? I but, caught them. I caught them uh, suspended on cut bait at about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 mile an hour. Uh, last summer, Rachel caught one suspend drift, and we were about 0 0.6 on a piece of cut uh, shad and she caught a 29 pound flathead. So, you know, a lot of people say flatheads can't get caught on cut bait or they'll say you can't catch them dragging or you can't catch them suspended. You got to anchor, use live bait. Uh, that may be true if you're catching 
trying to catch 70 pound flatheads, but these younger fish, these adolescent fish, man, anything put in front of them that comes by in front of them that's accessible, they're gonna eat, they're gonna eat. So, you know, it's just, it's it's no other, no different than a blue cat or channel cat fishing. If the bait's in front of them and they got the opportunity, they're gonna eat, you know? So, I've seen it done all three ways. Yep. Another thing is too, you know, we, we got here and we went and found us some fresh shad and that, that kind of changed the fishing a little bit where it, it seemed to work better for the flatheads. Of course, when we started out, we we're not really fishing for flatheads, but we end up with them, that's what we get. But uh, the blues is kind of what we was after, trying to catch some uh, more trophy blues, but it's been a real tough day. We've thrown skipjack. Uh, Moon eye and shad. Moon eye, shad. And some carp. And some carp. It's just been a tough day. It is really tough. But the weather's been weird today because the sun will be out. It'll be feel like it's 90 degrees outside. It'll cloud up, get real windy, and then the sun will come right back out and it'll calm back down. And then an hour later, it, it flips. So the weather's been weird today on top of it. So that's not really helped us. The river color of the water is not real muddy. There's not a ton of current, but there's current. I mean, you know, I told Willie that this morning when we crossed the bridge and I looked at the river, I said, this is the kind of river I like to fish, but it's like any day. You never know what the fish's mindset is going to be. And today it wasn't to let us catch them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got a little bit of lot jaw today, but that's all right. We're out here doing it and having fun. That's what matters. Now, just out of experience, one thing I will tell you is like Steve was talking about uh, the, the myth of using live bait and cut bait and uh, that you can't cut flatheads on, on cut bait, you can. <clears throat> Here's the difference, just in my experience. Now, I ain't saying you can't catch a flathead in a lake on cut bait, because you can, because I've done that too. But a lake has no current, unless it's a dammed up lake or something, but a lake that's just pretty much sitting still has no current, so there's nothing to carry the taste around to the fish that might be hunting or whatever. So those fish are hunting for vibration. A fish swimming, and in my opinion, I think they can hear the heartbeat of a fish. I think they can hear and sense with their lateral lines, all kind of things like that. So uh, I think when they're hunting for live prey, they gotta hunt by something that's live, not something they can actually taste that is flowing in a river. A river carries scent to the fish, so. It's always a big debate about yeah, rivers and lakes, and you know. You'll have, you'll have people that will still debate it, but like I was telling Willie, the, the lake that is behind uh, where our house is, uh, is about a four acre lake, and there's some pretty big uh, fish, catfish in there. And I had taken Skipjack and Shad home from river fishing and said, you know what, I'm gonna cut this up, throw a chunk bait out there, catch one of these fish, never get a bite. So I said, you know what? I'm catching a bluegill. Caught me a, uh, about a hand-sized bluegill, cut the dorsal fin off the top of him, so all he could do was lay down there and just kind of flop in the bottom just to draw attention to himself. And uh, I caught my first 26 pound uh, catfish out of the lake behind my house because I switched to, to live bait. So I do believe that in, going from a lake to a river that you do have to apply that necessarily, like Willie said, if you go to a lake, you're not gonna catch them on cut bait the way you are on a river. Because like in the spring when me and Rachel will go out and say, you know what, we're gonna try and catch flatheads and anchor up on flatheads. We still fish for cut bait. We don't use live bait. Uh, so it can be done on the river, but like Willie said, the sense traveling with current further so it can bring the fish in is where a lake, if it's lake still and there's no current flow, they're not gonna know other than some kind of commotion being made in the water to draw attention to it. Right. We always talk about, you know, lake fishing and river fishing and how, you know, just so many things are so much different to, to, to each place. So, you know, and I, that's why I like to do both. I, I'd love to get on the river a lot more than what I do, but uh, sometimes you just can't. So I'm, I'm, I end up being stuck in lakes unless I get down on a river somewhere. So... It's always a debate, river fishing versus uh, lake fishing. It's always a fun debate. So <laughs> anyway, guys, just wanted to touch on that a little bit for you. Yeah, and I don't care which one you do, just get out and fish. I mean, that's how I see it. You yeah, know? yeah, and get out and see what works, yeah. you know? Yeah, the only way you learn is to get out there and do it. 
you yep. know that's the that's the one thing about it is don't you know it, it's like i said i tried thinking oh well, i'll catch these fish off the river on skipjack and shad well that'll work in the lake well guess what it doesn't <laughs> Yeah. Different, different situation, different scenario. But then again, it, it's what in a lake is, you know, there's bass, crappie, bluegill in the lake. So what does catfish naturally feed on? So, you know, you apply a little logic to it. If you're fishing in a lake that you know has shad in it then and you're trying to catch flatheads, but I would say, you know, live shad, yeah, that's the way to go. But on, on a river, you know, it both work. I think... I do think on a river that if you were using big live shad, that you probably are going to have better luck for bigger, you know, bigger flatheads. But if you're just in general, talking in general, like, you know, we were, you know, dragging, dragging cut bait, you're going to catch flatheads. You're going to catch adolescent flatheads because they're going to eat whatever's there. Anybody I've ever fished with, you know, all has different things that they do and the different things work for them. I think it's more on how you target fish. You know, targeting fish is a big, big factor. You know, a lot of people know how to target and what they're looking for. So that, that's a big factor too, so. Hey, nobody wants to see my ugly mug that close. All right, I gotta turn around backwards, but I'm gonna do that. No, but he did, when he hit it, he took it down. And I could tell the minute he hit it, it wasn't no, it wasn't no hang up. Yeah, yeah, it was quick. Blue. Yeah, just a little aggressive blue. Yeah, he ain't very happy. Yeah, he's not happy with you, really. <laughs> I got some rippers back there if you need them. Yeah, he's he's not overly thrilled with what's going on. Another blue. Yeah, you'd have thought he'd look. Look at the spawn marks on him. Yeah. See him? He smacked the rod, dude. He smacked, smacked it hard. Yeah, he did. He did. He was aggressive when he hit that. But I had also sped the boat up. Remember I said I'm going to speed yeah. the yeah. speed ups if it helps. Yeah, that fish has got, he's still got some fresh spawn marks on him. Let this boy go. Yeah. Get out of there. I'm back. Y'all yeah. just getting out? Yeah. Are you? You mean to move anything? The only rod I had over there was that, uh, that one that just broke off. No, and I had this wave. Yeah, I'm going to fast. Got another. That's a flat. 
Really? It's a flat I was wondering why he's putting up such a fight because he didn't feel as big as, as, as much as he was fighting. He didn't feel like he was a monster. He's just a little mean flying here. That kind of goes along with the point we were just talking about, right? Yep. A little bigger. Yeah, just a mean play here. Pretty little guy. Look how yellow his mouth is. Look inside there. Look how yellow that is. Ain't even white, just yellow. Pretty little guy. It's like the blue shut off and the flat head started biting. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. All right. Here we go. Back home, but. I was not expecting that to be a flat here. <laughs> Steve, where can you get real catnapper rods at? Realcatnappers.com. Is there any other place people can get? Uh, uh, Nate Davis Tackle Bandit, TackleBandit.com. And Nate's, we'll Nate's got them in stock too. Right there at Tackle Bandit, right there. Yep. Okay. Yep. And right there at Real Catnappers. Realcatnappers.com. All right. Yep. Just, if I don't have something, uh, Nate will have it. You generally. Nate will have something in stock. I think Nate's got a few negotiators in stock now that I don't have. I'm out on our website, but I think Nate's still got a couple in stock. So, uh, and then he's got Ransom 1s, 2s, and Persuaders all in stock right now. So, you can check him out too. He carries them too. Okay, guys, if you're looking for catfish rod that handles some bigger catfish, blues and flatheads, channel cats, uh, Real Cat Nappers has got them, so... Give real cat nappers uh, a look and see if you like what they got. <laughs>